Okay, so everyone, thank you for joining. Um, we will start our live presentation now. Um, Bashir, please uh, feel free to take over and uh, share your screen with us. And uh, we will take the questions in the end and I will uh, look in the chat and if anyone has any questions, I will let you know, okay? That's great. Thank you, Alina. Thank you for this uh, great webinar session. And uh, I'll be sharing my screen right now and we'll start uh, the session. And as Alina mentioned that uh, you can ask any question regarding our presentation and the topic or even some topic related to the, this uh, webinar as well. But better you can write on uh, the chat box and you can ask in the end as well. Okay, let me share my screen and then we will get started. Uh, I would request everybody to mute. Uh, Alina, can you mute all and then yes. just unmute? Yes, please, I will because I, I got. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, I hope you are getting my screen right now. Yes, I can see the first slide. Okay, thanks, that's good. Okay, and now this is uh, Zoom, Zoom in. Yes, I can see. That's good. Okay, uh, so first of all, I would like to welcome everybody uh, who has just joined us and definitely people will be joining right after this, uh, throughout this session as well. So first of all, a topic which you already know that uh, IP for next generation technologies, right? And uh, that what next generation technologies are like 5G, IoT and cloud. So my name is Bashir Amazishan, as uh, Ms. Alina has already introduced me. So what uh, I've been doing and what I do is something uh, summarized over here. Like uh, I have uh, 10 years plus experience of uh, IP core IT and cloud infrastructures. And also I've been involved in uh, teaching and training and consulting. Definitely you can uh, follow me on LinkedIn as well for more all the my profile and everything so we think we shall start with the topics which we'll be covering in this session first of all uh, we will have a great a brief introduction of what ipv6 is or we can say ip version 6 why do we need it what is the uh, transition process why do we need this right now the carriers are a bit concerned about uh, the depletion of ipv4 but the consumer level, like the user, that mobile user, the internet user, they are okay with the IPv4. So why do we need that? So what is your uh, understanding on what is your thinking about it? You will, uh, I would like to know. So it's better you just write on the comment box and uh, I'll be start reading that comment as well. Meanwhile, what I can input over here is that IPv6, uh, IPv4 was running very fine. Even the, uh, the carrier, or you can say the ISPs are using carrier grade net. Net is basically, a, you can say mapping of uh, multiple IPs, like multiple private IPs to a single public IPs. So that is very good. Uh, that is going like, even uh, uh, at the carrier level, uh, like slash 16 IPs can be net. So things are going well. But uh, what if, uh, if I say like the big giant companies like Microsoft, Google and Facebook, now they started more focusing, like if we talk about like two or three years ago, since uh, 2012 or 13, they are more toward the uh, IPv6, like Facebook has shifted a lot of uh, its traffic to the IPv6, same with the Google and Apple and Microsoft. And the one major uh, thing, which is uh, the, uh, you can see the major paradigm shift is is the deployment or evaluation of 3G, 4G, and even now 5G as well. Now the connectivity of broadband and the availability of internet is just 
uh, emerge and everybody is uh, using internet like for example if we talk about 5 years ago or 10 years ago you can say very less number of people are on the internet or it is mostly of the official one but now everybody or you can say the uh, everybody in the home is using internet on mobile phone on the laptop on ipad and anything and he, and they are online every time and even the devices are online so this is the one one more uh, basic and you can say an important reason for that the iot as i mentioned we will discuss these iot aspects and uh, <clears throat> sorry 5g aspects and smart cities respectively okay, why they need ipv6 uh, now they why they need more number of ips and uh, so the exhaust the depletion of ipv4 is definitely was the concern but this was somehow mitigated by netting or you can say using multiple uh, carrier grade net base nets but uh, these three thing which i mentioned like uh, the you can say exponential growth of internet 3g 4g and 5 uh, 5g or the uh, advancement of uh, you can say the big giant companies they are more towards focused on ip4 so these are two basic or you can say three basic reason so ipv6 has emerged uh, the need uh, and the need is become imminent it's it's very important and as i mentioned um, about the iot like the word iot comes internet of things internet comes over it. like any device i am not going to the de details of iot and 5g but i just want you to emphasize why the ipv6 is important for the iot and the the cloud because uh, this is the motive of our, our presentation or webinar you can see to learn about the ipv6 but before learning these ipv6 technologies or the protocols and the, uh, the nitty gritties of ipv6 we, we must know why do we need that why what is the importance of ipv6 is that uh, critical to learn right now or is it uh, really necessary to work on it so the iot is the one thing which everybody is talking about your internet uh, your laptop is on internet but uh, you are working on a laptop for your official or your personal work but now your devices every device even your home curtains are using internet so everything or i i could say every device or simply i would say every entity entity means a user or a device or some process or some you can say equipment everybody needs internet and when you are in, on the internet you need something your identification like your name your address is very important for you to recognize so the ip or you can say the internet uh, addressing is very important for that entity which could be your device which could be your uh, uh, laptop or computer or your even the devices if i can mention you some uh, examples like uh, your door of of your home like you have uh, heard about the smart home concept that that every device is on your home starting from your curtain your microwave oven your fridge everything is being controlled over internet and they all have one certain ips here are some uh, pictures also given for your understanding and one was a basic uh, you can say a good uh, working from the huawei was there the link is given over here by 2025 there is 100 billion connections that will be possible the each connection could be from a device could be from a person or from some you can say some process so uh, you can say that these huge number of data will be extracted like 163 zettabyte data will be transmitted for example if i say an example of a uh, industry where every part is connected over the uh, iot starting from their conveyor belt their access uh, equipment like doors and locks and everything or their machineries their robots their everything their production line everything is being controlled over internet so they they all will be producing a data so this huge data will be generated and these uh, these data are coming from the entities which could be your devices your uh, person or your equipment so everybody needs uh, an ip to survive on the internet so i must say that need of ipv6 is 
now imminent. This is the technology which has been, uh, you can say, uh, uh, um, look, was not uh, looking very forwardly, but now it is the need of time. The same thing, uh, the concept you can say of the 5G. You just, uh, we had uh, some testing of 5G and even some commercial networks of 5G as well in, in, the, in the world, uh, like uh, some countries had commercially available with the 5G network, but mostly the network, they are on a trial. But we know what are the basic requirement of 5G. Apart from speed and uh, you can say higher availability of uh, RF signal, the main concept was latency and the connections. These are the two major requirements or you can say the major uh, uh, USP for the 5G network. Like you, uh, the latency is very low, which is normally around uh, 20 plus MS in 4G, but it uh, theoretically it is around one millisecond in 5G. So the, high, the less the latency, the higher the transfer uh, connections can be built. And the one thing which is very uh, prominent about 5G is the number of connection it can cater. For example, you can say millions of devices will be on the internet or will be having a connection over the 5G. So the more the number of devices are on the internet, definitely the answer is 5GV6. Because in when we are uh, having 3G or 4G, the number of devices were slightly lower than right now. If you compare uh, five or six years ago, the number of devices you have in your home and office are, for example, X number. Now we have two X or three X number of devices available. Like your every device at your home and office now can be on the internet. So this is very important. Uh, you can say the aspect uh, which makes me feel that IPv6 is very important. And as I mentioned that uh, there are three or four concepts which is very prominent for 5G, which is all already emphasized over here as well, like latency and higher speed and with a very low um, and reliable connections. Like the more the number of IoT devices, for example, uh, I gave you the example of uh, industry. Let me give you another example. For example, you have a cattle farm and you are having like 10,000 sheep and goats and something. So is it humanly possible to cater uh, to guide all these cattle or uh, you can say, uh, take a check and balance for all these cattle. So you just put a small RFID on their neck or maybe planted on their head. So each RFID or you can say some wireless device, it could be like a small internet device with, with SIM base, which is working on 2G or 3G which is very minimum nowadays in cost. So these can be tracked, how they are moving, what is the, uh, uh, their growth rate, everything can be controlled over. So uh, for example, you have a 10,000 cattle and everyone is generating like 2 KB data. That is very minimum. So it's mean per second you are generating more than 2 MB data. So what if, if you multiply with the 24 hours, then 30 days and then 365 days a year. So you can, so this is a small example of a cattle with uh, some thousand or 10,000 cattle. They are generating this much amount of data and the connectivity is required. But definitely it, it's very minute example, but if you take a bigger, bigger picture on a uh, global horizon, then you will got to know that how much requirement are these. Uh, even uh, just to add one common example that the people are working on remote surgery or operation. So you can imagine uh, the precision and the uh, uh, precision requirement for that operation because you are working on a human. It's not a robot or some device. So you need to be very accurate. You need to be very synchronized. There is no like no delay or multiple collections has to be maintained. Like for example, one is to handle the surgery by the doctor or surgeon or one, one cameras are there, different cameras there will be uh, taking input from the patient body and then sending data to the surgeon's laptop and also the information which is coming from their back end as well. So there are multiple connections has to be established. So these are some very common examples which I just shared with my uh, information which I have. So uh, like I give you three example of uh, 5G and IoT and something like that. So these are all interrelated. 
like 5g will be more uh, required for our internet of things internet of things cannot survive without cloud and uh, when you work on internet of things so data will be huge so big data comes in and all these uh, all these technologies are dependent on ip and the need of ipv6 is now now you you are convinced and uh, definitely you are convinced that's why we are here to discuss ipv6 but uh, i would again like to emphasize this concept again the need of ipv6 is more than ever is now so i think it has a very good introduction for all this thing but now uh, let's summarize this in a one picture where I, ipv6 can uh, benefit you you just take an example of anything is it a consumer network healthcare i have given you example of healthcare regarding the surgeries the agriculture example i have given you transportation iot has a big uh, influence on smart cities or you can say smart vehicle environments where every device is to communicate with every device and the process as well when we are moving toward the self driving cars or like drive the cars are talking to each other cars are talking to the you can say electric signals traffic signals they are talking to the next station they are talking to the uh, next stop as well they are talking to every devices which is connected over that route so ipv6 will be reliable and will be required everywhere you just count in so without getting further delay now we'll start what ipv6 and uh, how we will be learning so before that uh, i just had so many sorry okay so uh, ipv6 or you can say ip version 6 so previously we were we just know that this is ip and it was ipv4 okay but we uh, we were not concerning about the version but uh, now now advanced thing has come so we just put ip and then v and then 6 so uh, so it's a very large uh, you can say at this speed because you know that ipv4 has only 32 bits of address it's been mostly you can say 2 2 power 32 this is something like 4 billion address now still you will be amazed some of the participant that 4 billion is a high number why it is depleted and why because it's not about like every person on the earth will give a one ip like uh, like in industry or in equipment single devices have multiple ips due to the multiple requirements and uh, you can say the number of ips are more in some are reserved as well but when we comes to the ipv6 it is 128 bit let me uh, repeat again 128 bit it's mean previously we had 32 bits now we have 128 bit it is something like four times so uh, if i just say how many ips so this is something like 3.4 the rest of the power 10 keep 10 power 38 this is so big uh, so big number that i cannot read but uh, in simple i can say 340 uni decillion address i heard somewhere uh, this there is a, some uh, i don't know this is very accurate but uh, like every grain on the earth can be given a single ip if it is ipv6 that is something uh, which i just uh, heard somewhere so, so what are the benefits of ipv6 definitely the address space has is very very big you just know that thing and uh, this is very big uh, already i have told you but there are some few benefits which is very imminent and very prominent that is uh, addresses are very quality you know very easy it's very flexible flexible in this sense uh, we will be discussing this factor as well in the future times as well but uh, flexible in this sense previously in ipv4 the address spaces are like some very fixed you can say here we have very hierarchical hierarchical addressing and then it's very easy to configure because we have some uh, good protocols and good mechanism in ipv6 that can be configured you don't need to configure every interface manually in ipv4 you have to uh, put focus on configuring ip uh, except the dscp thing 
but uh, and there's a concept of mobile ip like as i told you that with the advent of mobile communication of 3g and 4g and 5g technologies the ip can be mobile you can say uh, uh, you can move and your ip will be fixed these things will be discussed but uh, like security has a inbuilt feature in ipv6 and the plenty of ip addressing and easy to communicate these are three basic things which is very important with the ipv6 let's uh, further move toward okay before moving uh, now maybe someone is asking i saw just a uh, message from somebody that uh, we uh, are we started working on ipv6 and where the world is working on ipv6 are they uh, working or are they adopting this thing yes if you see uh, the graph mostly countries with uh, some reddish sorry uh, with uh, some green and yellow they are more focused or they are more adaptable with the ipv6 so if i say uh, approximately 35% of your traffic or the availability of internet is on ipv6 right now that is a very big number as compared to the last 20 years for the last two or three years it is something like 20 to 10 to 12% increase so these countries are more uh, toward ipv6 you can see china india and america they are the leaders right now and specifically if i uh, take example from cisco website then they are showing like uh, russia for example they are like 5% of 5% uh, Uh, or to seven percent availability of IPv6, and they are, are having six thousand six hundred k IPv6 user right now. They are having so this is very good number. I, I'll I'll share the link as well for your information. Okay, these are some other links like the statistics from the Google, from the Cisco, from Akamai that is famous CDN. So you can view the statistics from the different. I just put two graphs, one from the Google uh, Appnic. which is the ip provider for the asia pacific region and one from the cisco which is a leading uh, uh, provider okay so as per the country availability i have already shown you the this the graph uh, but this is from uh, google as well and you can see 35% is uh, like this is september 4th uh, like two days before something 35% this is the current status you can see so we know uh, ipv6 is 124 128 bit it's a long number it's a long uh, range of digit so how can you remember this and one thing about ipv6 which is very different from ipv4 in ipv4 you were working on decimal number like for example my ip was 172.16.35.1 like every octet is separated by dot and then there are four octet but here we don't have octets here we have hexate because these all block like this is one block 2001 this is uh, of hexadecimal hexadecimal means uh, 10 decimal digit and six alphabets from a to f you know the number system hexadecimal decimal and binary binary is 10 and hexadecimal is decimal plus six hexa so they they are combination of hexadecimals and they are separated by the colon not by the dot this is very important thing which has to be noted okay so there is a one example given over here like 2001 db8 and then hexa uh, sorry colon 76 and this is the whole number now the the one thing which comes in your mind like how can i remember this thing and how can i even pronounce if even i am not remembering it how can i pronounce so there are some techniques which i'll be telling you to shorten this and definitely still the address is long to read but there are some techniques to read as well and to remember as well first of all i'll read and just you listen 2001 delta beta 8 7654 3210 falcon eagle delta charlie beta alpha 987654 3210 now what i did i just pronounce a word for the letter like i did say f i say falcon or i said eagle not e because sometime when you are on the phone or when you are doing travel shooting and the things are not going in your favor you are in a panic so you could be b and the other party would would be listening like c so it's better you use the word and now the things are very fast normally we do not 
call and tell somebody that this is my IP and having a problem. You just copy and paste it to the text box, to the message, to the WhatsApp, to the what to email them. So they can just easily do. But just for the safe side, I just told you the example. Okay. Now this is still a very big number, or you can say a string like a string of uh, uh, a large digits of hexadecimal. Some are four, some are three. This is why why they are not equal. So we will be, every uh, hexade should be of four hexadecimal digits. But sometimes we have three. Why it is that? So we will be discussing that this thing as well. So this is the process to shorten it. When there is a zero in the starting, we can omit. I can say you, I I'll give you uh, five dollar, or would I say zero five dollar? It doesn't make sense. I would say five dollar. So this is the same concept. There are three rules, or you can say three techniques to shorten this thing. So just to remember that uh, this is a big string. Now we will start cutting down, or we will uh, do a small operation to make it a small. Okay, there are uh, three rules which we will be doing one by one just to make you understand. First of all, we have an example of three falcon, falcon, eagle, and then a long string. Now, what I see drop leading zero, starting zero can be removed. So here you can see three falcon, falcon, eagle, zero, zero, zero. These three zeros can be omitted. So what does uh, happen? Uh, now three falcon, falcon, eagle, and then colon that two so everybody will understand that this, this two means there should be three zero in front of this two to make it four and then we have a zero triple one but i know this is not uh, this should not be zero triple one it should be triple one so now you can see that this whole string will shorten to this string this is the good uh, output now one more thing when you have Continuous zero, you can put single zero. You don't need to say, I have zero, 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 zero dollars. No, I have a zero dollar. That is fine. So same thing, three falcon, falcon, eagle, zero, zero, zero. It's mean only zero. And what if, if you have a two uh, two group of zeros together or two or more could be. So even you don't need to put zero colon zero, you would put colon two times. That is very fine for you but there's a catch what is that catch this double colon or you can say the summarized uh, network could be used only once it will not be like this if you have a double zero double zero colon double zero double zero then zero c zero one then again zero 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 so you would use these double colon only once which is which would be in the starting case okay so here, uh, I will repeat this concept again, just to uh, make you understand. And uh, if, if, if you just put a question over uh, the chat box, Miss Alina will tell me, and then I'll try to answer in the end as well. Okay, <clears throat> the first was very simple, omitting the leading zero. Starting zero can be limited, like zero, one, alpha, beta can be written as one alpha, beta. That is very simple. Same concept for double zero, AB could be written as AB. So you can see the whole uh, long string can be summarized to the smaller one. That is very good. <clears throat> Sorry. And the second concept was of double colon. We were using single colon for every hexate, but if you have a zero, 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 <clears throat> zero, 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 so we can uh, replace these two hexate or more than two hexate with the double colon. That is called compressed format. But that has to be used one. Here is the one example I have given you for the incorrect. You can see this guy. <laughs> okay, this guy uh, has did a bad job. Then he just tried to use double colon twice because maybe he has the address like. 2001, 0 delta beta L8, and then long string of zeros, then A, B, C, D, then long string of zeros, and then 1, 2, 3, 4. What he did, he did uh, two times uh, double columns. So this address cannot be used. Even the system will not process this. And if you give this IP to somebody, it will be discarded. 
so this compress format only used once okay i hope this is uh, cleared <clears throat> this is example for this uh, omitting uh, all zeros like we have uh, double zero double zero what he did he first of all he put all three zeros and replaced by single zero and then he replaced all these zeros with the double colon so the long chain of address will become the compressed one so this is a good example okay we have talked about little much about uh, ipv6 but it's better we can ping on our our laptop or system you just you can open your command line and you can put your loopback at maybe you are not using ipv6 right now but you can ping your loopback so there are two methods first of all you will put uh, like uh, this is a snapshot of my laptop like 00000000 colon uh, 00001 or simply i can use my logic and my technique which i had just learned for compressing uh, the long ipv6 address to the smaller one double colon one so it will start the pinging your loop back at so what was the loop back in ipv4 do you remember definitely you remember so let me tell you what is uh, the loop back address uh, of uh, ipv4 just mention in the chat box so just have a revision as well and also tell me if you have pinged this loopback address of ipv6 on your laptop on your stuff you can just put on your chat box window okay so uh, you remember like in ipv4 we had a uh, octets of like 126.3.2.1 every octet with separated by dot okay but here you don't have these dot you have a colon okay so the concept of addressing or grouping is same you can see because there is a prefix of a network address and then you are repeated like in ipv4 what we say network address and the host address like for example uh, just for understanding i'll tell you one example 192.168 is a network network part and after that 1.75 is a host part and we do subnetting and all that stuff which you already know i'm not going to that uh, what these are so address and then their prefix like the same concept applies on ipv6 but are little with with little changes like for example we have a network prefix and the interface id but but thus as you know that ipv6 has a long range of availability so we uh, we are uh, having a good chance to make it very hierarchical like in ipv ipv4 there is no concept like for example 1.xxx could be used in america 1.2. Uh, can be used in canada three can be used in somewhere else so and then five again used in america and then seven used in china or whatever but in ipv6 we have a very large address space so they just divide it as per uh, the groups or you can see the types and as well by the networks and uh, the geographical area as well like for example you know there are three or uh, five agencies which provide ip addresses to the uh, clients for example if i say uh, the ip address provider for our region asia pacific that is aptic we have rip we have uh, rn and we have afrinic for the africa so they are uh, the responsible for uh, giving you ip so they uh, in ipv6 the large chunk of ip is allocated to afrinic large chunk to the aptnet to ripe rip and to our in everyone so all these five uh, providers are there so they have been allocated with a long chain of ip so now they can uh, give uh, slash 32 to the isp then isp did the same thing like for example if isp has five offices in their country so they divided into a smaller chunk and then give it to the a b c d location and then these location will divide these chunks to the or further smaller subnet uh, of slash 48 and then these uh, site will give the users ip to the slash 
तो इवन अ यूजर सबनेट कैन बी ऑफ स्लैश 64 दैट इज वेरी अ लार्ज नंबर सो व्हाट आर द एड्रेस टाइप्स इन आईपीवी 4 लाइक वी हैड वी हैड वी हैड वर्किंग फॉर ब्रॉडकास्ट यू कैन से मल्टीकास्ट और मतलब फॉर दिस फॉर पॉइंट टू पॉइंट फॉर मल्टी पॉइंट फॉर for everybody but here in ipv6 little different like there is a unicast then we have a multicast that is the same and then one one thing is very uh, uh, different is unicast uh, we will be dealing one by one everyone what is these unicast is very simple it's same like 1 to point to point in ipv4 it is uh, it is a uniquely uniquely identified on an interface which is ipv6 enabled So every interface, like my laptop, is IPv6 enabled, so it must have a one unicast address. Then multicast is the packet or a type of address which is allocated to certain type. For example, I said I had, I applied this address to all the routers which are running on OSPF only. This is one group of set. Okay, so it could be anything. Uh, any multiple interfaces can be transported data using the multicast type. Best example of multicast which we Uh, use is uh, iptv like they broadcast uh, their traffic on certain ips so every devices which is working for iptv has these ips so they get the data acha there is no broadcast okay in ipv but there is any cast any cast is uh, is sending to any like for example i say we have 150 plus cast uh, participant over here i said who has uh, black lang laptop so this data will be only for the people who has black laptop so might be there are one person who has only one black laptop or maybe like 100 plus they are having black laptop so there is some condition which is nearest to me or some like you this is example more related with the multicast but let me uh, rephrase this in a easy way which is there like i said uh, who is uh, available with a black a black laptop uh, so who is near then respond me fast so traffic will be routed to the nearest one the one good example is that when you open a youtube <coughs> sorry when you open a youtube what uh, what happens the google uh, gives you data from the nearest network or the, you can say nearest cdn or the network mostly it is available on your isp premises or maybe your uh, uh, country's premises but definitely it's not going to happen like that i am searching a lap video for like a world cup final and i am getting data from a far location this is very good concept especially this is uh, more, uh, massively used in ipv6 okay so uh, now i'll be defining each of them specifically okay multicast i have mentioned you that this is for some multiple interface i'll try to be little uh, accelerate this thing because uh, we are having almost like an hour but uh, i'll keep things open for you to ask and uh, definitely this presentation can be shared as well so any address is starting with falcon falcon 00 are the multicast address so any address which if you see and uh, you see this is starting from double f double zero so you easily get that this is a multi card address there are some examples given for example i just read one example this is of uh, all the routers which is running ospf they are having address something like this for all the routers of rip they are having this and what about the any cast as i mentioned you that it could be sent to the multiple interfaces but upon upon the routing distance here i did not say a distance because in physically we uh, calculate a distance but for the routing for example maybe my router is connected with your router directly but uh, <clears throat> by routing it is far it is coming from some a b c d router so uh, by routing distance you are not near to so uh, this packet is only delivered which is nearer to for example this example this uh, picture might be little helpful for understanding that this pc is sending data to everyone but the nearest one will respond to you okay so uh, comes to the unicast address the first type which is the unicast you know what unicast every interface every device 
uh, has the unique ask factors. There are different types of unique ask. We'll be focused on the main exact, main ex main or the core unique ask statuses. And data is given for all the, but definitely I'll put focus on global unique ask and link local and loop back. So you will get to more data information about these widely used. So unique ask is uh, the address which is for single one. It could be global unique ask. Global unique ask is nothing different than the public address in IPv4. If I say I am routable to internet, that it means I must have a global unique ask address. Definitely, if I say in IPv4, I have 192.168 address, definitely I know this is not going to work on internet because the, the edge router, the core router will discard this, uh, the, <clears throat> this address. So we can use these IPs in the local area, but it will not propagate to the internet. So same thing goes to the global unicast in IPv6. Every address is starting with 2001. 2001, I repeat. 2001 is the prefix which is used for global unicast. Achha, what comes the local link local or you can say now that comes the word local. Local means something on the same link or some some close vicinity. Okay. So any address is starting with Falcon Eagle FE80, which is link local. And I'll I'll tell you one thing that if you open your laptop and then you write IP config if you are having a Windows or system or something, or if you have a Linux, you can write uh, same command. So you see IPv6, if your laptop is IPv6 enabled, then you will see the link local address is over there. Every device which is IPv6 enabled are uh, having these access. And loopback is simple address, which is not assigned to anybody. You just need to check uh, your connectivity, you just ping. This is the first example we do in your network networking world. For example, if you uh, think about IP4, as I ask you to write in a chat box, let me see if somebody, uh, most of the people have written this, that is 127.0.0.1. So if you ping this, then you will uh, get to know that your LAN card, your NIC card is okay to work with. So same concept, if you just ping double colon one, or you can write 0000, zero, zero, zero colon 000, zero, 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 or you can use the knowledge which you have just learned and you compromise, compri compressed this long chain of zeros into double colon and then one and then ping, you will get the answer. So uh, <clears throat> these three are very important. Then unique local is like private address. These are some examples which is very rarely used. Unspecified is when you don't have IPv6. So I, I more focused on these three because we will be doing lab regarding these global unicast and link local and loop back as well. Okay, so uh, structure I have discussed already this thing in the start in at There are two types, uh, two you can say blocks. First is for uh, network ID and then user interface. But if I say about the global interface, global unicast, what we do? Uh, <clears throat> Like you know, this is 128 bit. You divide network part 64 bit and user inter interface ID 64. -bit. Interface ID can be assigned by, by by my planner or whatever. But the global uh, unicast network address is slightly divided into two parts: 48 bit and the 16 bit. 48 bit is something like which is showing that this is global routing preference. And submit ID is something to, uh, you can say it depends upon the organization. For example, I have three offices in my company, ABCD. So I divided submit one to one office and submit two to the second and the submit three to the last one. So what I will do, uh, so it will help me to synchronize or to arrange in a better way. Okay. The configuration, the first thing which I mentioned in the advantages is that the configuration in IPv6 is little easy. Now you may ask that this IP is very long. So the configuration should not be very easy. It's a hectic task. But uh, let me tell you the other story. There are two types of configuration available. Same in the IPv4, auto configuration and the manual. Manual is something like 
you open your laptop or router or you write this IP192.168 and something. And if it is IPv6, then you write this IP and you will configure with a subnet mask and a default mask and then press OK. And then you are good to go. But still you are having a very large chunk of address to be written on this dialog box. But there are some very good options available in uh, IPv6. That is one is SLAAC, Slack. In short, we, we, we do say uh, Slack or we can normally say auto configuration. Where you don't need to configure IP for every interface. For example, just I'm giving you a very uh, layman example. I have uh, uh, 100 devices available and all has to be on IPv6 and like 1000 interfaces. So uh, do I need to configure it manually? No. Now you may ask that maybe we can configure a DSCP server, but you know there are some issues with DSCP as well because it's not always the direct connection. You need to relay DSCP messages and then you know DSCP is more focused of the, on the broadcasting. So I'm not saying we are going for DSC. So there's a one mechanism which we used is Slack. A stateless address auto configuration. Okay. This is short form is Slack. In Slack, what we do, um, it's very easy process. You can say we will do the lab as well. Okay. You will uh, make a default gateway of a router. Like for example, I say I have 100 routers. The router A is my default gateway and then it will allow everybody to uh, transport that uh, address to everyone and how these uh, the users or the beneficiary will get the IPv6 address this is what we define using EU EUI addressing so what is this the master router in layman example a master router will help every other router for example thousand routers thousand interfaces or devices it will help all others to get the IP and these IP will IP addresses from the same subnet, but it will be constructed by using their own Mac address. This is a little strange, but this is very true. How this is uh, being done, then <clears throat> this is what we discuss in our next slides. Okay, there is one more mechanism which we discussed like uh, we could use the DSCP. Yes, we could use DSCP in uh, IPv6, but little with the changes as compared to the IPv4. So this is this is called as a stateful address con auto configuration. Like we have a long uh, uh, LAN network, large network of LAN, and where we have multiple devices and computers and and devices. So we can run IPv6 DSCP server that is called DSCP version 6, same like uh, uh, the IP version 6. So and it will allow everybody to give the IP configuration. And you know what IP uh, DSCP does? DSCP gives you IP for some certain time that is called least time. It could be one, uh, one hour, it could be one day or whatever you just configured. And it gives you the default, at, uh, default gateway, it gives you subnet mask and what is called prefix LAN and everything it gives. So both option is available in IPv6, but we will more focus on Slack because this is something very unique and very important to use on IPv6. And definitely we will be doing <clears throat> a lab on it as well. Okay, so this is the concept which I was discussing for Slack that how uh, all the devices or all the interfaces will get the IP addresses. So the master router I will configure uh, you can say master interface i will configure one single ip uh, subnet on that interface and the all the remaining will guide the ip according to that subnet for example just to give you a, a example for example i'll configure 2001 colon uh, 1 double colon very short ip address just to make you understand now two things you can get from this address 2001 it's been it's a global unicast first thing second <clears throat> i configured colon one and then double colon it's been all remaining are zeros and this is slash 64 address this is for my uh, company or my office whatever okay now what what does it do now all the uh, my devices my uh, users and everyone will be <clears throat> assigning a ip address from this big subnet 
but everybody should be having a unique address otherwise there is an issue you know uh, the ip should be unique to everyone it's not like your name that uh, like uh, uh, there is a guy ahmed or there is a guy mark is available to every everybody in this world so <clears throat> their address should be unique and uh, which is from the same subnet so what you know every device or every network entity must have an mac address mac address is you know that it's a physical address or you can say it's a static address which cannot be changed by the legal means okay so what if if i will do some amalgamation of this subnet with the mac address with some uh, manipulation and then i'll get one ipv6 address and what is that process i'm um, the detail is given here but i'll be try to make you understand from this chart which is very good for example uh, you know that uh, mac address is of 48 bit that is very very true 48 bit fine and our ipv6 is 128 bit first of all i need to add some other digit as well first of all what i do uh, i divide this mac <coughs> this mac into two parts like 24 bits and 24 bit right 24 bit is like basically in mac what what happens the first 24 bit is uh, is unique to the uh, your organization for example huawei has multiple ouis same for the other companies as well and then the last uh, 24 bits are for the customers or you can say the devices for example Uh, a laptop uh, as a tech card which is of company abc so his code is for example 0001 so his first device will be 1 then 2 then 3 so 1 1 and 1 2 1 3 something like that so what what we do in eui process is that we divide uh, 48 bit into two chunks 24 bit 24 bits and we can uh, convert it into the binary you know this these are also hexadecimal uh, sorry uh, these are also are hexadecimal if you can see my uh, let me open a highlighter okay now you can see the highlighter <coughs> laser pointer okay we divide into the 48 bit into two chunks 24 and 24 and what we do i'll separate these two 24 uh, bits apart and then i'll put 16 uh, 16 uh, bits of one okay but but uh, the last one is zero so basically what is that a double uh, quad one quad one quad one and then triple one and zero or you can easily say in hexadecimal double f f e so uh, i'll again repeat that uh, big chunk of uh, mac address is divided into two parts 24 bit and 24 bit separate it uh, and and add fe fe in hexadecimal can be converted into binary like double uh, double one double one double one double one double one double one and one zero so you can say <clears throat> this 48 bit is now become 64 bit right so the process is also mentioned is over here the one thing is very important is that the seventh bit of the first 24 bit you can say this 44 bit has to be flipped like if it is uh zero become it it, it needs to be reversed fine so uh, for example what it was fc and when we uh, converted this fc into binary it becomes double one double one double one double zero and when we flip the seventh bit remember seventh bit uh, zero to one it becomes fe why become fe because you know if all uh, four ones are there it it is uh, the value becomes 16 and 16 is hexadecimal is f and uh, double one double zero becomes triple one zero which is equivalent to the e e for equal because the the triple one zero decimal value is equal to the e in the hexadecimal 
so now by using my mac i got this uh, 64 bit address okay it's starting from fe9947 double f fe75ce0 so if you have given this part of uh, the address you can easily correspond with the mac address you can see last uh, three uh, boxes are same and then you have ffee and then you have a same address with little change so this is how you make address of 64 bit now you can ask what about the other 64 the other 64 is already part of a global unicast or you can say the network part you don't need to be worried about that or you, I, i'll try to show yeah this is the same thing so you are just making the interface id so this is the very good, good example so by doing this process every device on the that network which is being configured using slack will be having a unique address okay <clears throat> as i mentioned in the starting that ipv6 is very very easy and simpler that might uh, uh, feel uncomfortable to someone that how can it is possible to very simple because when we are having a big addresses and more things so the concept is that there are multiple headers available <coughs> in ipv4 but in ipv6 header is very simple and very concise i'm not going to uh, go into the details what they do but only the important fields uh, which are required is available in ipv6 header where in ipv4 there are multiple headers available the version is number version number then traffic class how traffic is being class and then label payload and header and then source header and destination very simple there is no more details available so it's very simple to process for the router as well okay <clears throat> up now one question is from someone that how it is possible that 35% uh, of the network is on ipv6 right now it's been 65 is percent of the network is not on ipv6 they, they may be using ipv4 so how do we live if we are on ipv4 ipv6 so there are some uh, coexistence available for example you could run in your office dual stack dual stack is that uh, i'll define what is this like two parallel universe 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 concept and then you are having a, some tunneling mechanism and then you have a, some translation mechanism these three are the options what these three are for example if i say a dual stick some of my users some of my devices are only ipv4 compatible due to an issue maybe mostly due to the customer end because the end devices are if like if, if i take an example of a mobile communication the mostly mobiles are not ipv6 compatible or or you can say some devices which are uh, intermediate between these uh, network from mobile to the core they are not ipv6 compatible so some network is ipv4 and some network is uh, working on ipv6 and some is working in between in both so this is something like you can say both network coexist and uh, what if I, if i say in uh, right now in today's world 2020 we are using uh, the both so it's been some isp some companies they are using ipv6 completely some are using ipv4 some are using both so user are using as per their requirement and their need so this is the one thing and second thing is channeling what is channel means like same like we use in a vpn when you are uh, far from your home or office you make a tunnel over the internet or you can say a, a leased or private line or virtual line to your uh, office and then you use the office network the same concept if you are uh, working on ipv6 network your whole internet is mostly on the ipv4 so what you do you just make a tunnel over uh, that ipv6 network and you just transport for example i, I have an office in uh, location a and b and i'm connected over the internet but my office or my premises is 100 percent ip compared ipv6 compatible so what i have to do i'll have to make a tunnel over the internet and then i'll use this ipv6 technology on my both offices and uh, with uh, keeping the same internet which is mostly of the ipv4 right now and the one thing is that also one option is available that is translation like which is mostly we are being using for longer time like for when ip first started depleting 
mostly users or mostly company what they do they do just make a large chunk of private addresses to the users and then this large chunk is uh, netted to a single public ip so that concept can be used over here then if you have ipv6 network and you do translation net 64 like from netting from 6 to 4 6 means from version 6 to version 6 to 4 that allows my packet to be uh, transported to the other network which is only IPv ipv6 enabled but the network is passing from uh, the entities which are ipv4 enabled right okay uh, mostly we are uh, working for the ipv4 right now uh, the people are more uh, toward ipv4 you do tra trace ping trace out ttl loops with these these are the concepts which already know so somebody asks that okay, is it available on ipv6 as well yes but it will change like for example uh, we cannot ping the command we use ping and then ipv6 and then the ipf and trace for the same thing and the ttl is little bit different we check the uh, protocols and routing like for example ospf we use for ipv4 but ospf version 3 is used for ipv6 same for the rip and for the ospf and then so every technology is, is available over here Achha, uh, that could be introduced introduction can be done later let me take you to the uh, slide uh, for the topology and then we will let you know what we do just on that Okay, I just uh, reading my some questions that are very good. So I'll be uh, answering few of them right now, and then we'll moving to the lab, and then I'll I'll try to answer all those questions. So somebody asked that uh, why do we need IPv6 with the 5G? I think uh, I have already given the answer. Like in 5G, the connection number of connections or the number of uh, devices or entity on the internet are higher in number so if we uh, we are not moving to the ipv6 then then we will be not be using uh, full benefit of ipv6 okay and uh, uh, ipv6 is very huge block no overhead for and somebody ask uh, yes number of devices by 2025 will be billions right very right ipv6 more efficiently right and one buddy has asked one very good question I just saw yes uh, global unicast is a public address okay as I mentioned that public address is the address which is available over the internet or you can say which can be routed over the uh, or routed from after your network as well so the private address which is already bound to your network so the global unicast is the address which is same like the uh, public address in the ipv4 that is a good question uh, somebody has asked multicast can you repeat multicast multicast is very simple with the concept is uh, available on ipv4 as well the multicasting is means uh, like for example right now what i am doing i am doing I am talking to a group of people, but if I say right now I am talking to the person who are only uh, you can say Urdu speaker, who can speak Urdu. 
so i am talking to the certain group of people or i can say the people who are from the usa so these are i am talking to some group of people for example i gave you an example with a uh, video on demand or ip ip tv then the isp transport data on uh, multicast centers okay so the only devices which are configured with the multicast address will be receiving that or will be processing that address and same for the osp when when uh, you send data or request or packet to the multicast address only devices which is configured with osp will be able to respond on these queries the same concept on the uh, multicast in ipv6 uh, uh i can ask uh, if i can share the definitely i'll be happy to share no issue okay so get back to the presentation and then the our lab session okay uh, so what i try to uh, summarize in the lab session that uh, i'm not going to tell you what ensp and everything you, you already know this thing so i'll try to be uh, very focused at what our learning objective is that we'll configure try to configure manual uh, uh, ipv6 then we will configure with some uh, you can say auto configuration using slack or something and if i get time we will be using some osp version 3 that is for uh, osp for the version 6 uh, miss alina can you just let us know how much time do do we have so we can prepare accordingly meanwhile i'll try to share ensp okay yes ideally we should uh, the presentation shouldn't take longer than one hour and a half but if uh, you have the availability to um, i don't know maybe until um, one o'clock so um maybe 44 45 minutes more okay maximum. fine fine that's good if you so if you can are, uh, and also mm-hmm. if people can still uh, still uh, stay here with us if not uh, i will just record the session and uh, i will post it in the community later so uh, it's that's up good. to you and our uh, audience uh, i am willing to, you, to wait sure thank you thank you so nice of you so i'm 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 getting uh, very much fun and i'm enjoying uh, giving this session yes so and i see there are many questions so uh, yeah and yeah. Uh, we have a good number of people available as well so yes. we'll start and we'll, we'll see how how far we can go sure. so over to the nsp thank you okay so now we uh, can you share my uh, can you see my screen of nsp i just had a uh, one topology which is available yes. on our slide as well okay yes, so uh, this is a simple topology uh, you just write on a, a chat box if you are visible with the uh, my topology and you are okay with the topology it's a very simple topology but what main motive is uh, to understand uh, what we have learned and how to impl- apply this technology on the real world so uh, i would request everybody if you just uh, write okay or yes or whatever your input uh, if you understand what is this topology is for so are you okay with it you just write okay or yes thank you i'm getting some messages okay uh, first of all we have two parts one is our branch office and then we have a head office and luckily i draw some smaller box for the head office but it makes sense because we have some Uh, PCs and routers available at office, head office. Actually, what I was trying to uh, show you is that, like, if we have multiple branch offices, I'm not like if I take example of a bank, there must be one head office, and there are multiple branches available over the country and maybe uh, outside the country as well. So what they are doing, they are trying to uh, implement IPv6 on their network. So what they have to do, first of all, first of all. Uh, let me open this router and i would suggest one more thing if you can i i'll share this topology i have an idea uh, for all of you and i'll share this topology to ma'am uh, alina so you can get this topology and you will configure all that thing and you can send it back to me 
to just have a review or something or you can add something as, as for your practice as well so this would be some good thing which i can share with you so let's start with basic configuration now now this router is starting can you see the dialog box of uh, router as well or do i need to share uh, this thing as well i can see it um maybe you guys can confirm as well if you can see everything the dialog box for the cli do you see the yellow screen yes that's good fine okay now what is this uh, first of all i'll put uh, the name so i can remember uh, this what router is this first of all uh, what i see this is a r3 okay i'll just put the name simple name r3 so i can remember this is r3 right and what i will do i will do ipv6 and then enable this command do you see my screen and uh, what i am writing yes i can see it i am writing ipv6 or what command i am input uh, just giving yeah we can see very clearly okay that's that's good so what i did uh, i just enable ipv6 on this router by default ipv6 is not enabled on the router uh, like uh, you need to give command ipv6 and then this is enabled on the router now what i do i just see the configuration with i'll move this okay fine so uh, what i do this like this uh, this interface uh, gigabit 000 okay i'll have to configure interface 0/0/0 and then i'll i'll i am on the interface 000 okay now what i do i will enable ipv6 in the interface 11 okay now ipv this interface is ipv6 enabled so can anybody tell me what uh, if i have enabled ipv6 over the interface what will uh, what happened to the interface any changes or anything uh, added with this interface uh, can you write on the chat meanwhile i'll configure when i'll i'll get back to you what what changes has been done so uh, this is you can see uh, the ip is 2002 colon b so b is available on router 2 and i can use c over here that is no issue so what i will do ip version 6 address and then i'll put this command so what is i have manually configure the ip address on this router fine i'll show you the typically so i have configured enable ipv6 on this router 3 and then i'll configure this uh, interface gigabit 000 to the ip which is available over here and then what i do i'll open this router as well so now i can see now if i put display this so it will show me the configuration what i have done so far so you can see i have enabled ipv6 on this interface and i i have given some ip with slash c4 subnet mask right so now if i write display ipv6 display this interface definitely it will be showing you all the um, physical uh, values about the this interfaces okay 
So now you can see the interface is down and it is getting up and the MAC address of the interface and everything. Now what I will do. Now I have uh, asked for the display this IPv6 interface. So they give me the data for the IPv6 interface. Now can anybody tell what has uh, something which is uh, very important? Like I have configured this global unicast address which is uh, given uh, manually with the subnet mask 64 that is very okay. And there is one more uh, thing which I, I saw over here as well. That link local address. I did not give this address, it, it is automatically uh, available over. So as I mentioned earlier that all the links uh, which is IPv6 enabled has link local address. So the address is starting with FE80. It's mean that it is in link local. It is not propagating on internet on apart from the network, but definitely it is IPv6 compatible. Now let's move to the router 2. Now I come to the router too. Let me zoom in. And system view. And then make it R2. Okay, I think it's visible now. Same thing I will do. I will enable IPv6. And uh, what I will do, uh, I will see the, con uh, the port number. The port number is gigabit 0001. Now I'll go interface gigabit 001 now I am in interface so what I will do I will do the same thing I will enable IPv6 and then I will put IP address IPv6 address I will have to put 200 colon 2 colon colon b 200 colon 2 colon colon b and slash 64 display this now this is the configuration which i i got and now i see the configuration of ipv6 display this ipv6 Now you can see I have configured this IP on router 2 with 64 subnet mask and I also get the link local address because it is IPv6 enabled. Now can I ping my other party ping and then I will write IPv6 because I am not pinging normal uh, version 4 IP I am pinging version 6 IP. So I have to write ping and then IPv6 and then the IP 2001 colon to col uh, then uh, colon colon C. So now you can see I can pick the router 3 as well. Now same thing I can check on router 3 if I can ping same ping just to repeat IPv6 2001 colon 2 colon colon B. Same I can ping. So what we have uh, achieved so far that we have done the basic configuration we have enabled IPv6 over the uh, topology we have uh, configured a point-to-point -point link and we also have configured manual routing or you can say static route static addressing not routing sorry uh, manual uh, addressing now what I do I'll I'll try to configure uh, IPv6 on branch office but without putting manual IPs. I will try to put IP on uh, router 2 because router 2 is you can say the hard, uh, you can say head office address and then multiple branches can be connected over the network and then I will configure the route. Uh, uh, I, now I will get the IP on router 1 by using the EUI method. Now can anybody tell me uh, how can I uh, done this process that I will configure IP on router 2 and the router one will uh, will get that IP accord, uh, automatically or using the slack method. I just give you the hint. What step I have to follow. I'm not asking you the commands. I'm not asking you the complete uh, details. I just want to know the one liner 
what step i should follow yes uh okay uh the, the, the topology is being shown uh, to you uh, I, i think it's okay yes okay that's good topology is shared okay so what step i could use or what what i should do uh it, this is not a quiz quiz we have in in the last but i just asking a question <laughs> yeah so one body is using yes we can use channeling but uh, here i more focused on the auto configuration method okay which we had discussed in the uh, method for configuring configuring uh, ipv6 so anybody else can uh, let me know okay that's got okay so uh, let me share again right that's good now i have shared complete screen okay so uh, now topology is being shown over here so we have router 3 configured with a manual ip the same on the router 2 now router 2 is also con uh, con uh, connected with the router 1 using the public network or uh, our topology so what i'll do i'll do router 2 okay so what i'll do uh the interface uh, okay the interface connected with this uh, switch that is gigabit 000 and i'll try to configure something on it okay let's move interface gigabit 0000 and then i'll do the ipv6 enable and i'll configure the manual ip which is uh, this okay actually ha this is okay this is the ip so ipv6 address 2001 and then we have one colon colon a and slime 64 okay now what we have did the same process which we have done over here but uh, on this case or you can say the nato configuration mode this r2 is like for the head office and all the branches need to be configured automatically but we need to give ip over this interface you can see my mouse pointer the interface which is highlighted is to be configured manually so i have configured this let me open router one as well so it can boot meanwhile okay it's booting right now okay fine so this is configured acha here one thing we have to do that uh, we know when uh, dynamic route uh, automatic or you can say uh, slack is being configured what we have to do we have to put some command on our master or you can say the main router which is responsible for helping other uh, interfaces or router to configure ipv6 so let me put some command ipv6 and then uh, nd nd means network discovery because network has to be discovered first and router uh, and then put ra ra means a route uh, advertisement okay how the advertisement has to be sent and then uh, we will use the prefix which prefix to be used for example here in this case we have this prefix okay 
our prefix or our uh, 2001 colon 1 and then we have a prefix so my prefix is this and then we have some put some timers for example uh, prefix length 64 is a prefix length and then life timer i i'm putting 600 600 is 10 minutes and the same thing for the preferred life timer or i can summarize this thing as for example network discovery should be only for this prefix of this length with these timers i put 600 you can use anyone the ranges from the zero to the 4 billion something so the 600 is the minimum amount so the prefix has to be done only with this you can say uh, submit or the some uh, this this network address okay so here one more thing so i remove all the uh, network uh, discoveries apart from this network so undo ipv secretary nd r a nd is network discovery r a is route advertisement now uh, the router 2 is configured and then let's move to router 1 which is our branch office actually which is our branch let's move to this name let me change the router 1 so now we are in the uh, router 1 but wh what we have to do i have to enable ipv six now uh, let me go to the interface gigabit zero slash zero slash zero okay now what i have to do i have to do ipv6 and then what sorry okay ipv6 and i have to enable this because you know uh, it activating ipv6 is very important and then i i write ipv6 and then there is an option either we put an address manually i have to put address manually or i can write auto means you can get address automatically and what address i should be using either from dscp from global or link link look definitely i need a global because my head office and my branch office are being connected over the internet and i need my head branch office to be uh, internet aware area as well so i write global so now my uh, branch office will be able to get ipv6 yes or no again i would again request you to write on uh, chat box that will i get uh, ipv6 yes or no and if yes what ip would i will be getting either it's a uh, fixed ip or what, what what sort of ip is this you might be answering very well i i'll stop uh, i'm not stop sharing but i i would ask you to uh, write on a chat box then i'll show you that what ip i have gotten from my head office so router 3 to router 2 i have configured manual manual addressing from router 2 to router 1 we configured uh, manual on the router 2 end but on the router 1 and we have configured it automatically and the process we use is i'm giving you an example of slack so you just write uh, on chat box so yeah uh, that i'll be getting address from the auto configuration from by using slack and definitely display this because you can see the configuration first then i'll show you what ip i have gotten so this is very simple configuration ipv6 have enabled an ipv address auto global that automatically you have uh, ask for IP to be configured with the gl global unicast. Now I see what is this. Display this IPv6 and then interface. Now you can see I have been received an IP of IP of this. This is my IP from this subnet and with using Slack and with this timer and everything. Now I'll show you one more thing and you have link local definitely it is ipv6 never but i'll show you something first no command for the ip addresses but i got this ip 
so here in this our in this uh, topology we have only one uh, branch of it what if if there is 100 branches so i do not need to go each of them and assign single ip to every router or every interface i just go or you can say i can automate these two commands which is ipv6 enable ip ipv6 address auto global these two command can be run by anyone uh, either by some uh, some person or some technician or even i can automate automate meta process to run these two commands so every router or every interface will get one global unicast i can ping this ip ip from any part of the world so that is very good thing about the auto configuration feature of ipv6 which we have just uh, practice and learn so the my question was the simple two commands which i have run now you can see the hardware as address double zero e zero fc double delta zero delta 27 this is my mac address of router one right we are on the router one right and what ip address i have gotten you can see easily let me show you again <clears throat> now that's very good now you can see this is mac address of my router one and this is my ipv6 for the router one now let's deep this uh, into this address this is my subnet which i already configured i can see over here that 200 this is my global unicast now what i can see that last 64 bit is slightly same as of my ac address so my every branch office will be having a unique ipv6 address by using help of the mac address of that device so you can easily see last four uh, hexadecimal digit are same you can see this okay and then you have ffe which i have told you between this and starting four digit are same except except one bit swap so this is the another uh, good example of our theory which is being easily implemented over here as well so we have uh, successfully completed our lab session as well let me get back to the presentation again and so what we have did what we have done so far we configured manual routing from over router 3 and router 2 and then we configured automatic routing for automatic uh, addressing on router 2 and router 1 so what if if we have 50 routers everybody will every router will get the auto address from the router 2 with the help of router 2 same uh, subnet like which subnet is 2001 1 and everybody will start getting the ip address according to the mac address which we uh, they are having so this is very good uh, Topology, and I would like to thanks to uh, you people as well. It it helps a lot in understanding. So these are slides which be will be presented by Miss Alina because uh, these are mostly related with the uh, community, and there are some slides for the quiz which me or Miss Alina anybody yes. can discuss. So over Thank to you, you. ma'am. Yes, uh, for those of you who don't uh, know the community already. I just want you to know that uh, this is a technical community for all Huawei Enterprise products and certifications. Uh, we already have over uh, 181,000 members and we hope that uh, you will also join if you haven't already. Um, we have many engineers, Huawei engineers, but also partner engineers in the platform, uh, experts, customers, students, uh, uh, instructors and so on. So, um, if you want to have access to uh, an extensive knowledge base, many technical cases to learn from, many activities with rewards, webinars and so on, please go to the community and reg register or login if you haven't already. Um, here you can see some of the rewards we have now in the community. We have smartwatches, smartphones, uh, Amazon.com gift cards and so on. So um, 
please register if you haven't already. And now please uh, go to the next slide. Yes. Okay, so uh, this is how the webinar post looks like. Um, Sorry. Don't worry. I just want you to know that uh, Bashir will share three questions based on the content he presented. Um, 10 users who respond uh, the three questions correctly get a chance to win a $20 Amazon.com gift card, but you have to go to the community post uh, and uh, share your uh, your comment under this post. So if you so want to- how they, are, how, how they are giving the answer, either they are posting or they are emailing, what, what is the- No, 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 they, uh, so, I will send the link again. I already sent mm -hmm. it in the chat, but I will send it now again, just to be sure that everyone has access to it. It's very mm -hmm. easy. I will update the questions uh, after we finish. Okay. And they just have to go to the post, which I sent in the chat, and uh, leave, okay. their, uh, leave a comment with the, the three answers. So, for the very first good. answer, they need uh, they just need to put the number of the question and the correct answer in the comment, and uh, we will select ten uh, ten lucky users who is who respond very correctly, good. of course. So <laughs> definitely, yes, uh, you guys can find the can find the link here in the chat. Uh, you can see how the post looks like. And I would also like to ask everyone to vote for you because we have a competition for the best uh, webinar presenters. So if you enjoyed this presentation, if you enjoyed the uh, information that uh, Bashir shared with us, if you liked uh, this webinar, please go and vote for him because he deserves it. I hope that you guys will support him. I also send the, the voting link. So please go here and vote for him and also leave your feedback. Um, maybe if you want a, a, a new webinar with uh, Bashir in the future, we can discuss about it. Uh, he seems to, I personally loved your presentation. So I hope that uh, our users also Thank enjoyed you. it. So if you guys also enjoyed this presentation, please also go and vote for, uh, for him and uh, he will enter this uh, competition that we have for the webinar hosts. We are trying to uh, reward the best, uh, the most excellent uh, presenters. So um, enough, uh, enough for, for me now. You Let can, me see uh, if we have some question on chat box. Uh, sure, sure. You have shared the link as well. I have just seen a chat. Um, okay, uh, somebody write, S L A double C. It's S L double A C. Very good. Show the router config again. Router two. Okay, I'll I'll be showing you router two configuration. No issue. Uh, let me open ENSP. And you got the new okay. question just now. <laughs> ha, ha, I'm I'm sharing right now. Yeah. Okay, I have got one question. Like he was asking for the router two configuration. Yeah. Let me tell you one thing. Actually, I also like uh, the participation from the uh, everyone. I'm really thankful. Okay, so there are two things which we uh, configured on router two. First of all, the configuration, manual configuration for router two and router three, which we just put IPv6, we enabled IPv6, and then we put IPv6 on router two interface and router three interface. That is very simple. And then we configured some configuration for router two so every router, every interface which which are on the auto configuration will get the IP. So let me show you the IPs for so the configuration. That is this display correct. So what configuration so far uh, we have done? First of all, we have enabled. Let me tell you the configuration. First of all, what I have done, uh, done, uh, enable IPv6. So the router is IPv6 aware. And then what we did we configure these commands uh, these commands yes interface on interface 001 which is connected with uh, here which is connected with router 3 so simple uh, ip configuration on interface 1 with slash 64 
and for interface 000 which is connected with the router 2 router 1 for auto configuration we put three commands first of all of course enabling ipv6 on the interface then we had a ip address on the ip uh, ipv6 address on the master router which is r2 in this case and then we configure two command first of all ipv6 nd nd is network discovery and uh, basically what we do uh, we do ipv6 do ipv6 for network discovery nd using the route advertisement of this prefix the prefix is given over here with this prefix with this timer these two timers are live timer and preferred timer you can select any one but these are the optimal values and then we configured one more command that is undo ipv6 nd ra hold like i don't need discovery uh, from everyone i just need discovery from this address because this is our global unicast address subnet for this network for example we have one more client over here or you can say another uh, branch office so we can use the uh, we can make a connectivity over here so for example there are 50 60 routers so all will be having a different uh, different connectivity but they will be coming under one subnet so i think we have answered this as well so let me see if i have another question regarding this Okay, uh, Mr. Who has asked for the R2, R2 configuration? I have shown. Please show the configuration. Okay, you want configuration again? Okay, let me share you again. Okay, so here is a configuration, Mr. Brian. Uh, let me summarize again for you. Uh, let me tell, let me know that if you have uh, looking this screen. Okay, what we have done, we have uh, enabled IPv6 on the router level, yes. And then we configured two interfaces with IPv6. First one is the manual for the manual configuration for the R2 and R3, right? Which is very easy to understand. Sorry. Which is very easy to understand enabling ipv6 on the interface level and then give the address on the interface so so the ipv6 is configured on this level for this part of uh, the lab which is for the auto configuration using slack is uh, the interface 000 interface 000 has two configuration first of all uh, I gave a IP address which is being used as a subnet for a whole, uh, you can say, auto configuration. And then we put some command for, um, you can say, network discovery and something. And if you say, I, I can paste a configuration for you on chat box if you are unable to copy. Okay, let me do a copy. Okay, so I put uh, the configuration. Uh, Mr. Brian, are you okay with the configuration? Okay, let's see if any other question. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Acha, um, ma'am. Yes. Uh, what else we can do right now, or can we have uh, some um, questions or something? What we do? Yes, I see there are two people who raise their hands. Um, I'll let them. Uh, I'll unmute them. Hello. Uh, hi, Bashir. Uh, this is Danish. Hello. First of all, uh, 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 I would like to express my thanks. Uh, it was a very nice session. I have one query. Uh, why there is no or R concept in IPv6? Okay, Danish, thank you for your compliment and everything. Actually, uh, ARP is what ARP is basically. First of all, uh, let me introduce with ARP. No? 
basically basically it's an ad address resolution protocol so if you are working on layer 2 network uh, with the switches and you are devices connected the end devices hello yeah yeah okay fine so okay so when you are connected with the end devices or the layer 2 network you just generate an arp okay and what this arp is uh, doing it's like uh, you can say it's asking for the uh, address resolution like this is the ad my mac address and this is my ip address so who is available for this ip address and uh, it is mostly done on the broadcast uh, level you can say because like uh, if you put a uh, multiple pcs on a switch and then uh, the arp request has been sent to everybody but the only the intended audience will be able to respond as per their need so this is more focused uh, toward the broadcast and uh, regarding the ipv6 ipv6 is uh, one technology which is stopping our broadcast we uh, mostly focus we do not focus on ipv6 on broadcast level okay so arp is something which is prohibited in that that set and if you say uh, how can we overcome this limitation or uh, this issue in ipv6 if you say so what uh, there are some uh, uh, there are some mechanism as well to overcome like uh, if i say multicast for the broader range because like broadcast is something which is uh, sometimes is dangerous to accommodate in networks so just to limit this aspect uh, ipv6 is more focused toward the multicast multicasting could be uh, for two or three entity or could be for the uh, 100 or 1000 devices right so yes. anybody else has asked with the benefit of uh, uh, this command okay we we had two commands for the router too which is responsible for auto configuration first one was the ip address simple which ip subnet which we are using the second thing is for the network discovery this network like in that our our example our subnet was uh, 2001 uh, colon 1 uh, this was our subnet so only network discovery from this prefix is allowed allow. and then we halt uh, network discovery from any else else for example i'll give you a very common example what we do uh, when we configure VLANs on switches, we 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 configure VLANs. We 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 make VLANs, and then what we do? We pass VLANs which are allowed, and we undo the VLAN one because we do not want VLAN one to be passed. For example, if someone allows every VLAN, so we specifically disallow the VLAN one. So same concept could be applied over here. That uh, network discovery only uh, should be done with this prefix. Because normally auto configuration is being done, as I give you an example of, uh, uh, sorry, can you uh, example of branches of bank, which is normally uh, existing uh, are separated from the geographical region. For example, if I give you example a bank ABC, which has a branch one in uh, one country and he has branches on different countries as well. And definitely, admin will share the link. And uh, which email address you are asking for, uh, Miss? Uh, please don't send me your email address here because it's a private. Uh, it's your personal information, and uh, it's mm -hmm. not okay to share it here with uh, everyone. Yes, actually, somebody is asking for the email address. Miss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I know. know, but uh, I cannot. Uh, it's not okay to share your email address publicly here. It's ah, don't, don't share, yes. So I will share the, the recording in the forum post. Like I said, you can go to the community. You'll find the training materials there. So uh, I think it's better this way. Everyone will have access after. Okay, so this is... Um, Guys, you can su subscribe there. Go to the community. I will or I will share the uh, the link, and uh, you'll find everything you need there. The training. I said there yeah. is uh, Miss Alina. Sorry, there is very good question from Abdul Kafi. Uh, will Will you think uh, will IPv6 uh, IPv4 be obsolete someday? What do you think? Uh, 
I'll, I'll share you one uh, research in 2010 or like 2008 or 9. It was uh, suggested that by 2015, all IPv, IPv4 will be obsoleted or you can say will be depleted. But even right now, still uh, APNIC has some chunk of available uh, addresses. But definitely these are reserved for some special cases. Even, even, uh, even if it is expired or if it is used, there are some chunks which are reserved for testing purposes for uh, for others as well. So I would not say it it uh, it will be depleted someday. But definitely, if it is very uh, low in number and people needs more numbers, so even if it is available, then we have to shift to IPv6. And definitely, the big companies and big nations they are moving toward IPv6 sooner or later, and they are doing as well. I think we should try to to finish soon. It's been two hours mm -hmm. already. Yeah, man. yeah, it's already been. But yes. it's still, I I think we already have suppression. Okay, thanks again from my side, Miss Alina, first of all, and uh, Huawei as well, and Thank all, you. Uh, especially the participants, all the participants. We had a good number of participants available uh, from yes. different part of the uh, of the world. Even some uh, some people ask me for the time change because at their region it maybe it's night in us or something but yes, still they are there it's difficult and to cover all manage. time zones ah, yeah. Yes. yeah yeah definitely maybe stuff like in australia it's already evening time and in the continent or in pakistan it's uh, afternoon and in europe it's already uh, yes it's for sure but we are so trying to cover as many time zones as possible and it's impossible to cover all, all of them so I think it's it's a most suitable time which you yes. have suggested with mostly cover. Uh, so I hope uh, we have uh, done a good session and again thankful. Um, yes, I also want to thank you very much for this session and everyone uh, who attended. Thank you as well. Um, if you have feedback, suggestions, and if you'd like a new session with Bashir, why not? Maybe you can uh, ask more questions and uh, send your suggestions and we will take everything into account. But uh, this is it for now because it's already been two hours. Uh, so we have to end it for today, but uh, um, stay tuned for more live webinars in the future. So thank you, thank you all. Bye everyone, have a, have a nice day ahead. Or evening, depending on uh, your time <laughs> zone. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Definitely. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye bye.